and welcome to the 2022 Turbo Smart Ultimate Street Car Competition. The idea of the competition is simple. Many think they have the Ultimate Street Car and we've just given them an event to prove it at. This year saw a couple of twin turbo V10s enter the mix against the hard to beat R35 GTRs. And we had an all wheel drive Civic and a crazy paddle shifted Evo. The big question though, was could Precision Racing take the win for the fourth year running? Let's find out. Although we've tried to make judging the TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar competition objective, there will always be subjective opinions on what makes the best streetcar. We have come up with a judging criteria that we think works and combines the right combination of both. Cars must first drive from Yas to Cootamundra Airport and on day one we have engineering judging worth 10 points done by one of our staff with an engineering background Presentation judging, also worth 10 points, done by the guys from TurboSmart. A drivability test that I performed based on 20 years of driving various modified cars and a handling course worth 20 points. Then during the Tuna's Edge drag battle and PRP GTR challenge, we send them down Cootamundra Airport's runway to see how fast they are. We take an average of their best two runs with ET worth 20 points and mile per hour worth 20 points. The performance data is scaled with the slowest car getting 5 points, the fastest getting 20 and the rest scaled in between and a DNF gives 0. We met the guys at Yas Service Centre on the Thursday morning and got ready to roll. First off, let's kick it old school. Well, old school compared to the rest of the 2022 TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar field with Daniel's Evo 8 GSR 4G'd up. Built and tuned by Benchmark Solutions with shop owner Ben taking over driving duties. On the exterior, it has some subtle but effective mods. Evo 9 front bumper with lip, side skirt extensions, vortex generators and a vented bonnet. The Volk TE37s suit it to a T and are wrapped in a legit street tyre that can swing laps or head to the shops, the Yokohama Advan 8008. Inside them are upgraded rotors, pads and lines. Open the door and you are greeted by a custom trimmed interior with red stitching and aftermarket bucket seats. The full size Motec digital dash is also a trick touch and modernizes the interior. But what will really spin most out is the absence of a gear lever, replaced by a keypad, yet it still has a clutch pedal. Why? Because it runs a pneumatically paddle shifted Hollinger 6 speed dog engagement sequential transmission. Say that five times fast. So it's technically still a manual. You just shift the paddles instead of a gear lever. Cool, huh? 
The rest of the driveline has also been upgraded and it needs to, thanks to the built 4G63 under the hood, capable of making well over 800 wheel horsepower. The built 2.15 stroker engine has all the fruit from cam cover to sump and is built for drivability and response. Something you might think is tough with a precision 7275 turbocharger on a forward facing ETS exhaust manifold with turbo smart external wastegate. But a little bit of nitrous helps out if you're in a hurry. There is an ETS intercooler and a Hypertune inlet manifold with dual fuel rails and eight injectors done to help have good low down drivability. Electronics wise, there is R35 GTR coil packs and a Motec M150 ECU. The quality and balance of modifications meant the Evo scored great in both presentation and engineering with a total of 16 out of 20. With all the gear, we were keen to see if it drove as well as we hoped. It's still a dog box. Like, it's a race box. In yeah, a street car, it's a race so box. It's rubbish. Yeah. But on the flip side, you've taken what so should be just terrible. Stand on it now and put the ears about seven. All right. Go. That was uh, quite interesting. The guys from Benchmark Solutions really have actually put a lot of effort into doing to Evos and other cars, I guess what Precision do to their R35s, and that is developing a package that can be truly driven on the street, is reliable, drivable, usable. It's all well and good to have a 7275 on a four cylinder, but if you can't get the thing on quickly at roll racing, you're gonna lose. If you can't launch a thing, you're gonna lose. If you can't pull power down, you're gonna lose. So they've addressed every issue that you would have in an old school JDM styled car that's heavily tuned uh, and made it so you can use it. And for example, suspension setup and alignment, it puts power down even on 8008s, even on damp conditions. Traction control in the MoTeC is fast enough to allow to use pretty decent power on a street tire, on a damp surface. Uh, nitrous can be used to get the thing on real quick. With a little bit of nitrous just to get it on, honestly, you couldn't tell you had a 7275, and that's pretty impressive. 
On the flip side of the equation, though, what you have to also remember is it is still, you know, 90s Japanese technology with a Hollinger six-speed sequential in it. And no matter how good your tuning and how good your other support systems are, you can't escape the fact that it just still has a dog box in it. And there's only so good that'll ever drive. But here's the thing, I love driving stuff like this. It's like my 32 GDR. It drives great on the street. Um, I love driving it, but at the same time, it's got that 90s JDM aggression and rawness to it that a lot of people just love. This is a car that you get in and drive because you want to go for a drive, but probably not necessarily because you have to go for a drive. Can you drive it around? Of course you can. Would you daily it? Why would you build this and daily it? That's ridiculous. But overall, very impressed uh, of what they've done with this Evo. Really, really impressed. Able to put some pretty serious, I think over well over 500 kilowatts put down on a damp surface, on a street tire, uh, and it brought a smile to my face. And I think that's probably one of the most important things about this car is I just enjoyed driving it. And I felt comfortable really quickly. Really good job. Our next competitor is also an old school chassis with a modern twist. Moe's all-wheel drive K-swapped Honda Civic. On the exterior, there is a carbon bonnet and hatch and wide body front guards to fit the Bellac billet wheels wrapped in drag radials front and rear. Inside, there is a roll cage, Recaro seats and custom trim. The full-size Motec dash and keypad modernizes the interior, while the missing gear lever will confuse some considering it still has a clutch pedal. The Civic uses an air-shifted sequential, hence the paddles behind the steering wheel. Pop the hood and you see what is the big draw card of Moe's Civic, the masterpiece of an engine bay. Smoothed and painted, there is custom engineering work everywhere. The built K24 uses a pure fab exhaust manifold with twin turbo smart external wastegates to feed a precision 7675 turbocharger. There is a pure fab intercooler and Skunk 2 inlet manifold. In the boot is the custom fuel setup and nitrous. It runs an Mtron ECU with R35 coil packs and the guys at B2R Motorsport have made over a thousand horsepower at the hubs. Moe's Civic actually scored the highest in both engineering and presentation with nine and 9.5 out of 10 respectively. But an electrical issue unfortunately meant he wasn't able to complete the handling and drivability tests. R35 GTRs have won more TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar competitions than all other makes and models of car combined, and all have been from Precision Racing. They bought two along this year. Brendan has been a Precision Racing customer for a while now, and his R35 is now the latest PR16 spec, which has larger Precision 6870 turbochargers, Precision Racing exhaust manifolds, TurboSmart external wastegates, Plasma Man intercooler, and it has AMS inlet manifold. Precision Racing's MoTeC package controls the show and the transmission is a Dodson Spec GR6. Very much required with 1,680 horsepower. So are the Race Master drag radials on the billet specialty wheels which sit over carbon ceramic brakes. Inside, the interior is fairly stock except for Recaro seats, but an R35 interior is a pretty good place to be from factory. Brendan hadn't actually driven the car with the new setup yet, so I guess it was a test drive as well as a drivability test. Hi Aaron. Hey Andrew. We're back together again. Yeah. I feel like it's a little, I don't know, like a 
It's a good little story we've got going on here. You build awesome street cars. I hold ultimate street car. I get to drive your cars mm. that you build. Mm. Who's winning? I think we're both winning. Doing this to the camera, that's right. That's right. It's, uh, it's, it's good. But I mean, I'm, I'm getting. I'm, I'm You're desensitized. desensitized. Very desensitized because we've been doing this for how many years now? How many years have you been? This event's been 13 years. Yeah. Ultimate and how many been like five or six? How many years since we brought the first R35 GDR that was making? Oh, it's like 17 or something yeah. you bought, or 18. Yeah. Like it's yeah. been a while, yeah. so. I just drove Brendan's R35 Godzilla. I've seen this car quite a few times. I know it's reliable, does a lot of miles on the street. Uh, this is a PR16, so it's on about 1,650 horsepower from what Aaron's told me. And I think the biggest, most surprising thing is a few years ago, I was surprised that the 1,200 horsepower ones could hook up and go, but now they're getting the 1,600 horsepower ones to hook up and go. Still a cold, damp track, and I was able to put 1,650 down from second gear onwards, and man, it is just incredible what this chassis can do to put that sort of power down. Still drives like a pretty standard R35. It's not as smooth and as good as some more modern cars on the market, but if you've bought a stock 35 and then you pick it up with this, you'll be more than happy that you can drive it normally, which is super impressive. Um, and yeah, the drivability, it's, it's so hard to fault in this car, but at the same time, the power that it has, you can use it, which is just incredible, absolutely incredible. A big testament to how good the guys at Precision Racing really are. Mr. GTR is a proven streetcar monster, having done plenty of trips from Melbourne to Sydney and back and taken out the Roll Racing Workshop Challenge and running into the Sevens at GTR Festival. It runs a PR16 kit with Garrett G35,050s, with Turbo Smart external wastegates, Plasma Man intercoolers and AMS carbon inlet manifold. Precision Racing fuel system and MoTeC package, as well as their transmission upgrade, is there to support a little over 1,600 horsepower. Inside, there is a MoTeC dash and carbon seats. Outside, there is billet specialty wheels in gold, wrapped in drag radials with carbon ceramic brakes. Imran's car scored a combined total of 15 out of 20 for presentation and engineering judging. I was curious what these carbon seats would feel like to drive in. I don't think I'd drive to Brisbane in them. <laughs> but they're not you, too bad. Have you driven to Melbourne and back yeah, yet? Yeah, yeah, wow. They're not too bad. But they're not they're not as bad as you would expect, are they? Yeah. So obviously the biggest thing I noticed straight away with this is like engine mapping, gearbox shifts and everything are actually all mint. There's just a little bit more engine uh, and gearbox noise than usual, but look, honestly, compared to a modified Skyline GDR, it's, yeah, it's different. It's nothing, like it's just not that much to worry about. I take it that gearbox wine is just the gear set. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, mine's louder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's starting to probably be a little bit too much now, huh? Um, 
So you can get an idea now, this is how it drives normally. Alright, I will say this, the Motec tune and setup I've done with this is I can barely tell the difference in the shift patterns, everything from a factory one. Yeah. And it drives perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, driving that in the rain is like having a supermodel on your lap naked and you're not allowed to touch her. <laughs> Honestly, this car's gone 79181 and obviously the test that I have to do is how well does it drive and honestly, other than some gearbox wine, it drives like a standard R35. The drivability that the Precision Racing have done with this car, honestly, I could drive it around. It, I could not tell the difference between this and a standard R35 GTR other than gearbox noise and it's a little bit obviously lazier down low but honestly for driving normally you couldn't tell. This is what I love about GTR owners. In fact, all of the modified cars that come to this event. When I drove this earlier today, it was raining and Imran said, no, let's, let's go again, right? Yeah, I had to go again, go didn't go I? Again. He, yeah. there was, he didn't want to let me leave without experiencing how good it is, did you? Yeah, that's wonderful. It's, the, what spun me out then is we rolled on in second. I hit speeds that, it was fast. It was very fast. Yeah, we were, we were moving. Um, we were doing probably 270 plus at that yeah, point. 282. We hit 282, there you go. So we were, um, and we probably could have kept going to 300 if we really wanted to. But this car's gone 79 at 181 with two people in the car, it's probably 8081 at 178 or something. But we did that three times and then it just drove back in like a normal R35 and he's ready to go to dinner, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow, wow. <laughs> wow, that is so good. Yeah, unreal. Unreal. Two cars that were highly anticipated for the 2022 TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar Competition were the twin turbo V10 monsters from Precision Racing. First up, Ashraf's Lamborghini Huracan being driven by Joe from Precision Racing. It retains the stock motor but with Precision Stage 2 Turbo Kit comprising of their own exhaust manifolds, Turbo Smart external wastegates and blower valves, Garrett GTX 35 turbos and their own charge coolers and billet inlet manifold. Precision Racing's MoTeC package controls the V10 to the tune of nearly 1400 horsepower. 
The transmission is stock except for the upgraded clutch cage and clutches. The engine cover makes this one a bit more stealth under the hood, but being a Lambo, everyone is looking anyway. The Belak billet wheels wrapped in drag radials gives the game away to enthusiasts though. Inside, the yellow trim adds some pop, but you'd hope a Lamborghini interior would be a good enough place to be out of the box. I won't deny I was pretty excited about getting behind the wheel of a Lambo again, especially a twin turbo one. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. I've driven, I've driven factory ones, so I kind of know what to yeah. expect. And the fact that you can just still putt along like this is pretty good. Yeah. Hey, it is a drivability test at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I've noticed like you can still let revs drop right down. None of the factory drivability off boost or anything you've lost. <laughs> that whistle where you've got sales people. Just that little bit, right? Yeah. We'll show you what it's like to drive normally. The first time you do it, you kind of go, what well, happened? What happened? Yes. I just did a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> finished the competition we're done that's it that's the ultimate street car right there baby um, Ashraf's twin turbo hurricane was on 1400 horsepower and the guys from precision have they've mastered this package if you drive it normally it drives like a standard hurricane um, the shifts are the same you don't lose any drivability over a factory one you get all the wow factor and the same everything is a factory one but um, yeah, put that loud pedal down and you got 1400, you know about it. Obviously it's a little bit damp in a couple of spots, pretty cold today. Uh, Joe did warn me that if I rolled on in, in first or second gear, it would just try and blow the tires off and turn on itself. So I rolled in in third, first hit was still had a little bit of wheel spin and wanted to step out a little bit, felt the car out, second hit, I was able to roll in and get straight into it. Man, third gear is where you start having real power in this and it was like a time warp. I went from 50 to 250 before I could even have the chance to register what was going on. Luckily enough instinct in my brain from driving so many fast cars, still drove it fine. Um, you can let it shift on your own. I short shifted probably slightly, a couple hundred RPM before it would have done it itself because I wanted that experience. But man, it is just, how do you fault it? How do you fault a twin turbo Lamborghini Huracan? Very, very difficult to fault. And there's a reason everyone's out to beat one of these is because well, they are what they are. So good.
Audi R8 is often considered the more subtle, sensible, comfortable and daily drivable of the twin V10 supercars. Well, as subtle as a supercar can be anyway. George went the R8 option for that reason, but don't be fooled, this thing is a monster. Although still running the stock engine and gearbox with upgraded clutches, George opted for the Precision Racing Stage 4 Turbo Kit, which is capable of 2,000 horsepower in anticipation for when the motor is rebuilt and toughened up. The turbochargers in this kit are Precision 7675s with Turbo Smart external wastegates and blow-off valves and the Precision Racing charge coolers and billet inlet manifold. The Precision Racing MoTeC package enables the stock engine to make 1400 horsepower. Incredible stuff. The exterior is stock, but in black, the car looks unreal, matched with signature SV104 forged monoblock wheels, wrapped in drag radials and covering carbon ceramic brakes. The interior is Audi quality and luxury, so no need for any changes. The big question was, how would the Audi R8 drive in comparison to the Lamborghini Huracan? Are you ready? Come here, come here. Have you driven this yet? Not yet. All right, at all? At all. I'll, I'll drive it from gas. Any hits? No hits. So if I give it a hit, yep. I'm the first person to give it a hit? Bar Joe. Bar Joe. Correct. Okay, that's probably a good thing though. Yeah, it's okay. So in theory, if you allow me to give it a hit, which you don't have to. It's okay, I know where you live. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is a 2,000 horsepower kit or on a stock motor for now, right? Is that right? Correct. But so, it's not true, obviously, the 2,000. No, of course not. Yeah. It's, it's, so yeah. turbos are for that. Turbos for Engine is still stock, so what, 12, 13, 14? I'd say 1300, 1400. That's okay, I've already driven, I've already driven one with that, it's fine. That, that's what they're telling me, right? So <laughs> obviously they're going to baby it down because it's got a stock tree yeah, and stock course, motor yeah, yeah. and stock axles. Yeah, no, right. but in that case, I'm not as game to do in this what I did in that. Oh no, look, if it's going to break, it's going to break. All right, let's go then. It's, let's go. That's, <laughs> that's what we're here for, man. Do you hear a funny story? What's that? I, the only R8 I've ever driven is a GT3, which really? is not really good. Yeah. I don't think I've actually driven a normal V10 R8 road car. Should be very similar. I heard it's a little bit better. More comfortable. Right. For an old man like me. This just has the clutch basket upgrade. Right? That's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah, it still drives me, doesn't it? It's actually quieter inside than the Lambo, but a little bit nicer. Yeah, I'm surprised because the, the exhaust is only like two foot, not even. Yeah. You know? gates are just, you know, two inches off the uh, outlet, so, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But to drive normally, this is actually a little bit quieter and smoother yeah, than the Lambo. It is. Which is apparently what the Lambo... Very much smoother than the GDR, the 35s, you know. The Lambo feels a little bit more like an occasion. This, I kind of feel like, like it really actually would still be a dinner. Yeah, sure. Well, well, I think what, the Lambo... That's what I built it for, you know, not, not to go to dinner, but, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't take, take the wife out and not draw too much attention. Just a little bit of attention. Only to look at the That was an eye-opener. I thought I loved the Huracan and the way it drove, but there's something about what the Audi R8 does that's just, it just does a few things a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit quieter, it's a little bit nicer. It's almost like, it's, it's true what they say about the R8, it's a more usable daily driven supercar. And even with the twin turbo kit, yeah, it doesn't lose any of that. So this is a car that you could drive around all day and have a little bit less attention than the Lambo, be a little bit more incognito, but still has the performance that you want. So. The, the Lambo is more, look at me, I'm in a supercar, while this is more of a like, yeah, you know I've got a supercar, and you get to enjoy it uh, more than the people, I guess, watching get to enjoy it. But this is a little bit quieter, a little bit smoother, a little bit more comfortable to drive, and we're talking, you know, minuscule differences here of, of better, but one thing I did surprise with this car, and I think a lot of people are surprised about, it actually drives better with larger turbochargers on it. The Huracan with its turbos comes on so aggressive that it wants to send me off into the grass uh, and potentially, you know, cause some damage. It's like, it's wild. It's a bucking bull 
uh, as the name suggests, but the larger turbos in this actually made it come on smoother, more linear and more progressive. And even on a wet track, I could roll into third and yes, there was a tiny bit of wheel spin, but it was actually more drivable or usable power uh, I guess is the way to put it compared to the Lambo. Now, if you're at the track and you're launching and everything, that doesn't matter so much. But when you're on the street and you want to roll on and have some fun, this is actually, in a way, a little bit safer having those larger turbos than what the Lambo is. But honestly, we're, we're splitting hairs here between a Huracan and an R8 for which one's better. But this one probably pips the Huracan just a little bit for drivability overall um, and the usability of the power. But man, like they're both epic, but this, George is, uh, yeah, he's going to love this. And you know what? It's pretty weird that I got to give it a big hit before he did. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, at the end of day one, I'm going to say this. It's very, very close in multiple different areas, to be honest. Um, I Picking the best car from a drivability point of view is not about saying, oh, yeah, that's way better or that's way worse. We're, we're splitting hairs here to get the most drivable car. From an engineering and presentation point of view, they're all excellent cars. They've all got their strong points and their weak points in the judging. The handling course will probably separate a few cars at the end of day one today. But man, this is a tough competition for 2022 Turbo Smart Ultimate Street Car. You're probably asking which car would I take home out of all of these? I don't even know if I want to answer that. I enjoyed every one of those cars. Um, but if I had to pick a personal favourite purely from the driving experience, in every way, like as in, would I be able to drive it out to dinner, you know, take friends in it, uh, could handle it on the road, safe to use, drivable. I think the Audi R8 is probably my personal pick when it comes to the most drivable car here in every dimension. That's the one, if you said, which one do you want to take the keys of right now uh, for everything, I'd take the R8. If you said, which one do you want to take the keys for the handling circuit, I'd probably still take the Evo because it's just fun and raw. Which one do you want to do laps of the city in, I'd probably take the Lambo. Uh, which one do you want to go to roll racing in, I'd probably take the R35s. Like it's, they've all got something where I'd probably prefer one or the other. But if it was a pick of everything, the Audi R8 for me. At the end of day one of the 2022 TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar, the twin turbo Lambo and R8 from Precision Racing were tied on 51 points, with the Evo from Benchmark Solutions not far behind in third with 47 points. Being this close, it meant that ET and mile per hour scores during Drag Battle and GTR Challenge would determine the winner. Let's see how they went. For the 2022 TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar Challenge, ET and mile per hour are worth 20 points each out of 100. The cars must perform at least two full-timed runs and then we take an average of the best two. Top car gets 20 points, slowest gets five points and the rest are scaled in between so how the slowest car performs can actually determine the spread of points. Mo fixed the electrical issues in his Civic overnight and we were pumped to see it hit the quarter mile. Unfortunately, Moe's clutch decided a thousand horsepower and all-wheel drive was too much for it and he was out. After thousands of kilometres, multiple events and trips to the drag strip in nearly two years since being built, Imran's car broke, of all things, a front diff housing. So he was out. Brendan's R35 had similar bad luck breaking an ETS output shaft, meaning it had no front drive. So. That left the Evo and the two twin turbo V10s to battle it out.
When the dust settled at the end of the drag racing, the Audi R8 took top points for ET and the Lambo took top points for mile per hour. The Evo, although proving to be a 9 second streetcar on proper street tyres, came third in both and scaling meant that the R8 and Lambo finished within one point of each other, 89 versus 88 out of 100, giving Precision Racing a 1-2 finish. All right, the winner of the 2022 Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar Competition is George in his Precision Racing Audi R8. Mate, congratulations, well done. That is very well deserved. The thousand dollar check will probably cover fuel. <laughs> you were the four wheel drive winner. You, I, I don't know if you've won Quickest V10 yet, you're in the lead, but you could even get another trophy. You must be very happy with a brand new build. Fantastic, listen, I couldn't be um, happier. I'm proud of what Precision's done. Uh, they've turned this car around um, you know, within a month just to get me here. I'm um, still waiting on gear sets and stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, look, they've done a great job. They want me to come out and enjoy it. Um, I'm happy about the event. I'm happy that you guys have put it on and uh, you know, relatively everybody came out pretty good. Now, let's get this straight. Standard internal engine correct. and the gearbox is standard except for the clutch cages. Is that correct? That's correct. That is in, so it's a stage one clutch sort of setup in terms of like, normally you only do the clutch setup on a stage one, but you've gone and put, what, stage, stage 2,000 four. horsepower yeah, for turbos, four. right? Yeah, it's gone stage four horse uh, in the clutches. As I said, PPG are doing the, uh, the first gear sets. Yep. It's going to be trialled in this car first. Um, and whilst I do that, they'll build the motor. Uh, so hopefully in about a month's time. So really, you've got 2,000 horsepower turbos on it to ready for later, Correct. but right now it's 1,400. That's right. And yeah. it's already gone yeah, 86 here. It's gone 86. Um, <laughs> Look, I'm pretty stoked about that. The, the boys had it prepared. I, I turned up thinking I was going to tow a car and be the cook, but um, they said, listen, <laughs> your car's here, take it. Everything's going to be replaced anyway, so whatever happens, happens. Uh, that's drag racing. Um, so, you know, I, I hope for the best, um, but, uh, you know, things can go wrong, but that's part of drag racing. So let's get, so in the ultimate street car on the Thursday, I gave it a hit before you. I gave it at least a couple of hits. Yep. Um, you let your son give it a couple of hits. Right. You got to have a couple of hits and then you let me take out one of our fire crew for that's a right. hit at it. And then it's done runs for two days. How many, this thing's had a few hits, right? Like it's not like it's on a stock motor with that power and had one hit one day. It's, it's done a lot. Yeah, it's done a lot. And uh, look, the guys at Precision have learned a lot uh, through it. And uh, obviously knowing, you know, what the engine is and the turbos that it's got, you know, they just tune it to, you know, to be something enjoyable and safe. So, you know, look, the day's not over. I don't want to jinx myself, but, um, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, I'm here at the event and I appreciate this and Turbo Smart and everybody else that's, uh, that sponsored the event. So, uh, thank you. Mate, if I had an Andrew's choice, it would have won it as well. So it's actually pretty awesome to see that my favorite car for this event is also the winner as well. So well done, mate, well done. Thanks yeah. guys. Congratulations to George on taking the win and Precision Racing on their fourth win in a row. The big question now is who can top them next year? Looking to 2023, we are looking to add in a two-wheel drive category and differentiate between the early and late modern, keeping the competition exciting for all types of car owners and viewers. Make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss out on all the other action from Cootamundra Airport this year in the Tuna's Edge Drag Battle and Platinum Racing Products GTR Challenge. See you next time.